This is the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. It's the mouse that I use to control my PC every day, and it's great. It's got 11 fully programmable buttons, it's got a max DPI of 20,000, and of course, it's a Razer product, so it's got absolutely fantastic RGB. This is the charging dock for not just the Basilisk, but for a bunch of Razer's recent wireless mice. There's just one problem. It's such a flaming hot piece of garbage, I'm surprised that Razer even allowed to sell these things legally without there being some sort of massive class action lawsuit against them. I'm not kidding. All over the internet there are complaints from hundreds of people who own this thing, saying that it literally just does not work. Now, why Razer chose to include this thing with its mice is a mystery to me, given that its competitors from the likes of Asus and Corsair both include wireless charging on their wireless mice. So today, I'm going to attempt to take this thing apart and give it wireless charging capabilities of its own. Good evening all you wonderful people of the internet, my name is Spatchy and today, I'm going to attempt to fix Razer's biggest mistake. So, just how are we going to squeeze wireless charging into this thing? With a little bit of engineering magic, of course. So, I went to one of my favorite sites, the Pi Hut, and found this little wireless power core set for just six pounds. Now, the charging dock of this mouse is supposed to provide 500 milliamps, and this coil does say it only does 300 in the title, but down here it says the max current is 600 milliamps, so I'm just gonna go with that, I guess. The first step of the project was to remove this sticker on the bottom to get to the screws, so I used a hairdryer to apply some heat, and then slipped some tweezers under the corner, and it peeled off without much effort. You'll notice three torque screws here, and there are two more located under the bottom two slip pads. You can leave the top two and the side one, as there's nothing under either of those. After removing all five screws, I used a spudger to separate the two halves, and found this ribbon cable connecting them. I used some tweezers to lift up the little flap and remove it, and actually didn't realise for an embarrassingly long time that it could be disconnected at both ends, so I kind of just let it flap around for most of the project, and it did get quite annoying at times. I'd recommend removing it if you're doing anything like this, just so it's out of the way. It was at this point I started wondering if this was going to be possible at all, as of course it was already pretty packed in there. But I decided to lift up the main circuit board to see how much space I really had to work with. There were a few Phillips screws keeping the board down, and not all of them are obvious. There are a couple around the battery compartment that can be a bit fiddly, and there are three which you need to remove the mouse wheel to get to. After you've undone the screws, there's some adhesive tape holding down the battery compartment, but it comes out with just a little bit of wiggling. The battery cable is fairly easy to remove, you just pull upwards on the connector. The mouse wheel has two cables connecting it to the main board. The first is this ribbon cable, which is removed by flipping up this tab here and pulling out. The second one is the cable off to the side, which requires a little bit more force and a slight wiggle to get it out. The scroll wheel itself is held in place by a plastic clip towards what I would call the back of the wheel. This needs to be pulled away for the scroll wheel to release. I hope I explained that okay because it was fiddly so I wasn't able to get a good shot of me undoing it. There does seem to be a couple of clips holding down the main PCB, so I used a plastic spudger to run around the edges and just pop the board off. At this point the on off switch is just sitting loose in there so I took that out and just wow that sticker is needlessly huge. We can now put the board to one side for the moment, as at this point I wanted to test the wireless coils and see if power could actually be transmitted through the plastic casing of the mouse. In order to test it, I first had to solder the transmitter coil to this micro USB breakout board. Now, I can already hear some of you reaching to turn off this video because I've committed tech blasphemy and gone with micro USB instead of type C, but hear me out. The mouse itself has a micro USB port and cable which is used to update the firmware and also connects to the garbage dock. Since I'm trying to make a drop in replacement for the dock, I've elected to use a micro USB here so I don't have to use two different cables for one mouse. Now with that cleared up, let's solder this thing. Now might be the time to admit I have very minimal soldering skills. I once replaced the battery pack on some mini Christmas light LEDs, but that's pretty much it. So once again, I'm sure I've annoyed a bunch of you soldering nerds out there by just how sloppy this simple soldering job is. If you want to rant at me, please do it in the comments. At least then YouTube may reward me with some of that sweet, refreshing algorithm juice. Now with the transmitter plugged in, I found a part of the mouse casing where the receiver could just lie flat. This did so happen to be the thickest and least ideal point to put a wireless charging coil, but I figured that if that worked okay there, then it would certainly work when positioned better. And yeah, it worked. It took a few tries, but my multimeter did hit 200 milliamps, which would probably be 
just enough to charge the mouse slowly by itself, but I expected to get better results when I was able to fix it more permanently to a thinner part of the casing. Next came possibly the trickiest part, deciding where I was going to fit this thing permanently. I realized that the circuitry of this little board on the receiver was going to pose more of a problem than the coil itself, but I quickly realized it was almost the same length as the compartment where you store the USB receiver dongle when it's not plugged in. Since I never travel with this mouse and the receiver is plugged into my PC practically 100% of the time, I decided that it didn't matter all that much to lose this little compartment and it would store this board perfectly with a bit of modification. The coil would then have to be within reach of this point and I decided that these screw standoffs were probably the least important for stability since they're off at the side and out of the way. Since I don't have a Dremel or a rotary tool, which by the way would have made this part so much easier, I used a drill and a sharp craft knife to work away at these two standoffs until the plastic was pretty much flush with the bottom of the case. This took a few rounds of drilling and cutting and I was super worried about damaging the plastic beyond repair, so I went pretty slowly, but I got there after a while and I'm actually really happy with the result here. So by the end of the process, two screw standoffs were gone and there was a nice circuit board shaped hole in each end of the dongle compartment. I also took the opportunity to make my friends think I'd gone crazy and was mutilating my 130 pound gaming mouse for some bizarre reason. Okay, that is totally what I was doing and I did wonder myself whether I'd completely f***ing lost it because I was totally gonna ruin this thing and then I'd have to tell everyone how much of an idiot I was. But of course I carried on out of sheer spite towards myself, towards Razer and I don't know, the universe or something. Cool, now I've actually got to do the thing I came here to do in the first place. Give this mouse a wireless charging coil. Well, that wasn't too hard. I actually decided to avoid as much fiddly work as possible. It was better to run the wires the other way around with the wires from the coil itself running in this gap here and the wires from the board around this screw standoff and under the mouse's main circuit board. For those that haven't figured it out yet, I'll be soldering the ends of these wires to the pads that make contact with the pins of the garbage charging dock. Since there's no data transfer, just a positive and negative terminal, there really shouldn't be any difference compared to what the mouse expects. Aside from the fact it will actually be a good connection and actually works to charge the thing. Before I started soldering though, I wanted to run a more accurate test with the coil in this new position. I cut some small strips of electrical tape to secure it down and used tweezers to apply them to the coil just so it wouldn't slip around during the test. I lined the two coils up and once again got out my trusty multimeter. Just how good was this connection going to be? This was a genuine make or break for this project. Could we get high enough current? Yep, this charging coil actually exceeded my expectations and gave us the 500 milliamps we needed with a couple extra milliamps to spare. I was actually a little bit stunned that it worked out so perfectly. After that, I then spent a while longer making sure the coil was completely fastened and insulated by covering it in electrical tape and I secured the wires and the circuit board in place too. Now I had to prepare myself for what was possibly the hardest and most risky part of the project soldering the coil's output to the mouse's main board. I decided to load up the dock points with a decent amount of solder first to try and make my life easier, but I actually ended up soldering the wrong parts of the pads at first because my smooth monkey brain forgot that of course I was going to be flipping the board over. So yes, these pads did end up quite covered with solder, but to be honest it didn't really cause a problem as all the board is pretty clear around these charging points, and it didn't get in the way of the plastic later on at all. I did have to cut and strip back this red wire a little bit because it was too long and since the end was fraying and I couldn't really twist it into a neat solid end, I applied a small dab of solder just to make it easier to work with. I then of course had to solder the wires to the terminals. Of course it was fiddly so I wasn't able to get a nice shot of this process but it was actually nowhere near as tricky as I expected, probably because the terminals are so big which makes them easy to work with. With the connection secure, I flipped the board over and used my tweezers to route the wire around any standoffs and capacitors to make sure the board would lay flat properly. The only thing left to do was start reassembling the mouse. I plugged back in the connectors and that annoying ribbon cable and tried for a stupidly long time to put the mouse wheel back properly. I just couldn't get it so the middle click would click down, it just stayed in place. 
This is until I realized that I didn't have the three screws in the mainboard that went under the mouse wheel and somehow that made it work. I honestly have no idea what those screws did to make the middle click work again, but they needed to be in there anyway, so I'm not complaining if it works. With the battery connected back up, I wanted to test the mouse to make sure it all worked before I screwed any more back together. I wanted to switch the mouse on and have it connect to my PC and just move the cursor. It was at this point I realized I forgot to put the power switch back in before I screwed the board down, so I had to undo and then redo all of my reassembly just so I could switch it on. For this next part, I'll just leave you with my genuine reaction. This was being recorded from my phone, so sorry for the audio, but you'll see for myself why I wanted to share this with you. Okay, this is it. Moment of truth. The battery is in there, so when I turn it on, the mouse wheel should light up. Click. Oh my god, there are lights. I mean, the mouse wheel hasn't, but I've got a light. That means something works. Does it move the cursor? Oh, it still works, it still works, it still works! I am so happy! <laughs> See, yeah, I practically broke out into song there at the realization that I didn't break my 130 pound gaming mouse. The rest of the reassembly is pretty easy. It's just screwing in the remaining screws and reattaching connectors and ribbon cables. The big one that connects to the top half of the board can be a bit fiddly, but it's not too difficult. Of course there'll be one Phillips and one Torx screw left over at the end because the standoffs we removed, but as I suspected, the two missing screws really don't impact on the stability of the mouse or anything, and once it's put back together, it feels exactly the same as it did before. I was also able to put the slip pads back on, and they hadn't lost their stickiness at all after being off for about three days, so I was pleasantly surprised about that. Now. Time to test and see if this thing can actually wirelessly charge. Oh my god, it works! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I am so <laughs> flipping happy. <laughs> no trickery, it's not plugged in. When I take it off, look, it's off. Wait, 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 can I, let me zoom out, let me zoom out, let me zoom out, let me zoom out. Oh god, that, that quality's bad. Okay, look, it's on, it's charging, it's charging, it's off, it stops charging. <laughs> Once again, I think the pitch of my voice tells you everything you need to know. Now, you probably noticed there that that receiver coil there was, well, just the coil. In fact, I'm recording this over a week later and it's still like that. Ideally, I'd like to have a nice 3D printed dock to throw my mouse on, maybe even something with RGB, but I actually know nothing about 3D printing or 3D modeling and I don't own a 3D printer. So, I'm gonna send you guys on a mission. If you can find any small 3D printing channels based in the UK, I'd love to do a collab with them, and I'm sure I could do something really cool in return. So please ping them and also let me know either in the comments or in the Discord. And of course guys, I'd super appreciate if you did all the usual YouTube stuff and clicked all those lovely buttons under the video. My last video is on the screen if you wanted to go and watch that and then come back here and tell me how much I've improved, I'd really appreciate that. And um, I have something really cool planned for the next one, so uh, until then everybody, stay hyped.